Um, with that snapshot comparison, and, and I should have noted that all of these comparisons are as of uh, June 30th of this year. Um, we then take a look at trends over time, uh, starting first with consumer prices. And, and on slide 33, we note the um, indices that we take a look at. Uh, consistent with the union witnesses' economic testimony, uh, we have looked at the Northeast uh, urban CPI, uh, kind of a broad regional CPI that encompasses uh, Pennsylvania among, another, uh, among a number of other uh, Northeast states. And we also present the chain to consumer price index, which is only available nationally, uh, but that's the index that the Bureau of Labor Statistics itself has cited as their closest approximation for cost of living. Uh, in that index, they factor in uh, actual consumer expenditure patterns to take into account the ability of consumers to substitute uh, choices in their market basket based on how prices are moving. Uh, so if um, a market basket has beef one day and beef prices skyrocket because of mad cow disease, but pork prices are flatter and people are indifferent. Uh, the actual cost of living, if folks switch to buying more pork, hasn't gone up. In a traditional CPI market basket, you're capturing uh, the escalation in beef prices that people aren't even buying. In the chain CPI, they're looking at real expenditure patterns to factor that out. Um, again, the BLS use that chained approach as closer to actual experience, uh, but the regional index, uh, which is considered more of an upper bound measure, uh, does give a little closer sense for any uh, factors that may be associated with different um, geographic uh, contributors to economic change. Um, so we looked at them both, and on slide 34, you see how bargaining unit general percentage increases across the board wages have grown relative to CPI change uh, during the term of this contract period to date. Um, under the most recent uh, award for this bargaining unit, um, there have been annual increases of three, three and four percent respectively. Uh, compounded, that's 10.3 percent. And during this period, and we are missing uh, the last couple of months of the contract year because uh, we don't know yet what they'll be. Uh, consumer price growth to date has been very low on a compounded basis, uh, ranging between 1.8% for the chain CPI to 3.3% uh, for the regional CPIW. Um, even if those CPI figures grow a little bit, and they very well may over the remaining months of the contract year, uh, general percentage increases alone uh, are well in excess of this consumer price change. And if you further factor in um, the longevity increments uh, earned by members of the bargaining unit or step increments for those earlier in their career progression, uh, actual wage gains have been even greater. Uh, for a CO1 that was already maxed out in terms of base pay but still moving through the longevity increments each year, uh, total uh, wage growth over this period uh, would have been 13.4 percent um, for someone just starting as a trainee at the beginning of this period, uh, moving up into the CO1 position, uh, capturing the advantages of steps at the beginning of a career, uh, wage growth would have been over 30 percent. Uh, the next slide, 35, <coughs> looks at uh, time periods consistent with those presented in the union's eco economic witnesses testimony um, and it highlights um, a, methodolo a methodological difference in the way we um, address consumer price change relative to contract years. Um, the union witness um, will start analysis uh, for a contract year uh, typically um, the day after a wage increase is granted. Uh, so in 
the analysis shown here, um, the table, the, the bar chart reflecting her data is, is that to the left of the page. Um, she started uh, her analysis in July 2003 and took the data up through February this year, the most recent data available at that time. From July to February, she found that wage growth to the bargaining unit uh, had not quite kept pace in terms of general percentage increases. Uh, with CPI growth, uh, but that presentation excludes a 4% increase uh, provided on July 1, uh, the first day uh, of her series um, and the first day of the contract year that she's analyzed. Um, in our approach, we start the day before, we capture uh, the wage growth for a full contract year, so if you go from, uh, July 1 to June 30th, and there's a 4% on July 1, we show that 4% relative to the CPI change for that same contract year. Again, in the union witnesses approach, she would show 0% for wage growth because she would start immediately after that 4% is granted. Um, it's really, in some respects, a matter of perspective, uh, and are you showing how much um, you need to catch up, or are you showing what's been accomplished or what's been granted over a contract uh, period? Uh, but as you see, in using the approach from, from June to the most current month available, March uh, of 2011, over the same basic contract years uh, that her analysis encompassed, um, we see the general percentage increase growth having outpaced the CPI. Uh, and if you factor in the uh, longevity increments and for those who receive them, step increments uh, available to the bargaining unit members, the wage gains relative to consumer prices would have been even greater. Uh, and finally, on slide 36, uh, we step back and take a longer term perspective uh, recognizing that there are going to be fits and starts in when wage increases are granted. Um, and uh, here you see uh, the past nearly quarter century of wage gains uh, for members of this bargaining unit uh, since June 1986 uh, relative to CPI growth for the same period. And you can uh, see in this chart that general percentage in increases alone about pace consumer prices uh, over that longer uh, time perspective. On slide 37, we next look at trends in compensation for the bargaining unit uh, relative to uh, other uh, Commonwealth employees uh, in the testimony presented um, by, the, by uh, Amy McCarthy, there were comparisons made to state police and comparisons made to the relationship between state police pay and correction officer pay over time. Um, it is the case that state police, uh, over the period that she indicated, uh, did receive general percentage increases uh, that were in excess of those received by members of the bargaining unit. Uh, and while one could prop the data in different ways um, and take into account contract cycles uh, from alternative perspectives, uh, that is fundamentally um, what has been experienced uh, over this uh, general time period. Uh, to provide the panel with a broader perspective on how corrections officers have fared uh, relative to Commonwealth employees. Uh, we've also presented uh, general percentage increases uh, for AFSCME, uh, the largest Commonwealth bargaining unit, um, for um, three other uh, public safety related groups, uh, park rangers, capital police, and game officers. Uh, and. Um, Whatever the set of reasons, and there are reasons associated with the particular issues, dynamics, and timing 
uh, of the bargaining for each of these groups, uh, the state police have outpaced everybody. Um, and the corrections officers have not only outpaced consumer prices during the different periods we looked at, uh, but they've held their own uh, with um, most of the Commonwealth's uh, workforce or have exceeded um, other uh, state employees in terms of their general percentage increases. Now I would note that the bar chart here just reflects GPIs um, during this period uh, as noted on the slide. Uh, there was a lump sum for ASME that did not go into base. There was a lump sum for game officers that did not go into base. Um, there uh, were other differences uh, in terms of uh, step and longevity increments uh, received by some of these groups, not uh, by this bargaining unit, not by uh, ASME members, and not by any of the Commonwealth's uh, 14 other Act 195 units. Uh, but again, in the aggregate, uh, the broader picture uh, to me indicates uh, that corrections officers have been treated uh, consistently or better than uh, most of the other Commonwealth employees during this period. Um, finally, uh, the last two slides look to the issue of how uh, the Commonwealth's wage increases over the past roughly a decade, and particularly the past contract period, have compared to some of the other state corrections officers in our survey group. Um, as, I, as I've noted previously, um, the most recent contract terms for the H-1 bargaining unit generally built off of a pattern negotiated prior to the onset of the recession before it had technically been declared when, when things were uh, not looking great but, but not looking anywhere near as bad as they turned out to be. The award was issued uh, during the early months of the recession before it had been technically uh, called by the business cycle dating uh, committees. And it provided uh, annual increases of 3% uh, to 4% in each year. Uh, plus increments. Uh, looking beyond Pennsylvania across the other 11 groups uh, that we surveyed in, in other states, uh, for that same three-year period, four state corrections officers, uh, nine of those 11 states uh, froze across the board wages in at least one of those years. Uh, seven of those states, seven of 11, had at least one year with no across the board increase and no step or merit increase. And three of those states had salary reductions or cost savings days in Ohio that are uh, similar to furloughs and were taken on what would have otherwise been vacation days uh, to reduce overall pay uh, for the bargaining unit members in those other jurisdictions. Uh, during this time period, uh, only two of the states uh, did not implement wage or step freezes, uh, although of those two, uh, Illinois is, uh, did delay some wage increases that had been negotiated uh, prior to the full onset of the recession. And New York State is still arbitrating some of this period uh, with the outcome not yet resolved. Um, taking a little longer look back, uh, and all of this is summarized in the final chart on slide 39, um, six of the 11 states, a majority, have had more than one year uh, since fiscal 2000 of a wage and step freeze in the same year. Um, and uh, the way this chart is presented graphically, um, the yellow shading indicates a step freeze or a state where there's not a fixed step progression where the general increase is it uh, in terms of movement uh, through the range. Uh, the red fonts uh, for the numbers themselves indicate across the board or general increases, and the red shading reflects those states uh, where there were years of salary reductions. 
time and again across this period 